Welcome to Thursday, September 7th, 2023, Parking Advisory Committee. And um, we are, all of our members are here and um, ready to begin. I'm also keeping minute meetings here. Um, welcome um, everyone. And are there any public comments before we begin? Any additions or deletions uh, for the agenda? <laughs> Do we need to add Jim on for the agenda and Lisa? Or are they just going to fit into something we have pre existing? Good question. Uh, how about if we, uh, yeah. When the discussion opens with uh, Josh and the direction of PAC, we would love your input. And um, maybe part of that, Jim, you can just, if you can hang around a little bit longer, just give us some updates for, that'd be awesome. Great. Thank you. So we're gonna put them welcome guests, Josh and Lisa and Jim. How's that? All right, you're just buzzing ahead here. 605. Would you like to join us? Sure. Or anybody wants to join us at the table? Yeah, I mean, like gonna, all come around. It's, it's, just, first, yeah, it's just us. It's gonna be it's just us. Might yeah. be easier to be there. Yeah, and this first part of the discussion um first is like to speak up and say, wow, what a summer this has been or a summer that wasn't here and really acknowledgement for josh you and lisa from the town for all that you have done it's been a lot of work it's been a lot of work and um part of the I've done that either. Uh, it's been quite a year and um and also the, the recreation the weather it's been a different kind of summer that we've ever experienced and we, as the Parking Advisory Committee, haven't done hardly anything at all uh, once we got hit with all the stories. And the reason being is we just, we were just, um, most a lot of our work deals with Pete, mm -hmm. uh, the highway department. A lot of us works, uh, you know, we're trying to deal with the, the recreational parking that's happening. There just wasn't much. At all because the rivers were so high and well, they weren't even safe to be in. So they weren't safe. To encourage people. I, mean, I was I was telling John the other day that the only thing I see are kayaks. Yeah, people yeah. are loving kayaking. You know? yeah. like, all I've seen out fast, yeah. Yeah. fast and and I've seen on top of piece people's cars a lot of kayaks. Um, very quiet, very very quiet. It, 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 the east east um Cochrane Road, very not so quiet. The gorge has had some interesting up on Dugway Road. So we can bring all that in, but um, a lot of us um, have been trying to see how we continue forward because, you know, do we keep meeting every two weeks or once a month and go, okay, what's happening? And there hasn't been a lot of happening. And we came together, as a matter of fact, at the last meeting, I pulled up the little write-up we did um, in it was December 2020 about why we were coming together and it was really dealing with those pinch point um, recreational parts it was trying to resolve some things and uh, we did all kinds of things and changed all kinds of things and went back to some other things and um, and then we turned our attention up to Dugway Road when Chuck came on and um, kind of like, oh, like yeah, what do we we're kind of looking for direction, Josh. Mm -hmm. Like, and again, it's not a typical summer, um, but there's five of us here. And and I think I even talked to you early on after a year about saying like, okay, like, are we done? Like, do we move into some other areas? Do you put the recreational parking under a couple other, I think I talked to Revy ones. I say like, yeah, sometimes I feel like we're not in the right spot. Um, sometimes I feel we spent most of our time trying to see who was doing what, you know, reading minutes, trying to figure out what to do. And now we're at that point again, we're just going like, um, 
so I guess I'm, we just all wanted to, to talk to you. And I guess we do know we will go in front of the select board and we'll talk to sure. them. But like what we're really good at is we collect data and we talk about it and then we, you know, come forward with a couple of decisions. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like our fact finding. Yeah. And, so if you want to just give us, you know, a conversation about what you see being the town manager and how yeah. this works. So right now you're sort of, you know, like you're a committee without a project. It's like you've done a lot. Like that first year, you really we add a lot of public parking spaces. And then I think what the second year, you really address the ordinances. Well, most recently, the ordinances around East End of Cockham Road and up on Dugway Road. And now you're sort of like, well, and, and those are all the problem areas or a lot of the, the big problem areas at that point. And now you're sort of, is the question kind of like, where do we focus next? And I haven't really heard a lot. Of, as you said, it's been a different type of summer. So I don't know that we truly tested the ordinances to see how they're actually working. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because there's been a low demand for rafting, but we'll see more about that next year. Uh, but then again, it kind of comes down to enforcement, right? Like you guys have done what you need to do with that place. Um, and I haven't really heard a lot about any other areas in town that really need a lot of focus, like we were with Cochran Road and Dublin Road. Um, I don't know if Lisa is from other residents, so she has a, like six okay. bullet points here, so she might have some thoughts on the next project. But, you know, I would think, you know, as a committee, it's very helpful to have you together to some extent, but I also don't understand you don't want to waste your time to meet every two weeks and there's nothing to talk about. You know, one thing that the ARPA committee did, and they're a little different because they have sort of a defined end in some respects, is they kind of just paused meeting for a while to say, okay, we're kind of done what we can do. If the select board needs us for something in the future, we'll get back together and review something and make a suggestion. So, I mean, a similar model could be you could meet once a month or once every two months to sort of like stay together, talk about any current objectives. And then if something does come up, at least we've got a committee somewhat together say, oh, there's now a parking problem in this section of town. We've got some people with experience. Let's see how we can address that. It is an idea. <laughs> it also might want to be done, it sounds like. Well, so. I think we've talked about that. Yeah. yeah. John? I mean, uh, we've also talked about sort of looking at how our purview inter intersects with some of the other groups mm -hmm. recreation with trails with parking the, the actual street parking and trying to figure out you know is it does it make sense to diffuse you know what what we're doing here back into those groups mm -hmm. maybe even having some of the people join those groups um mm -hmm. but but I do want to also remember that last year we were at this exact same point we got an assignment we kind of took it up yeah. um, so maybe we you know we're like the power rangers you know when something comes up <laughs> we'll band together <laughs> make the call and, and there were sort of two things that we needed pete's help on to plan if, if some action was warranted one was the parking near gillette dam where the new land trust planned parking lot was thought to be not enough for a big turnout for skating and whether there would be uh, parking available on a wider shoulder on the the west side of West White Hill Road of, um, near the dam area. And the other was that the very nice job of putting new asphalt down um, on the on the end of Cochran Road adjacent to the meadow also rendered um, some parking on the shoulder very difficult to use. And uh, whether what P Pete had more information about, perhaps in addition to how, whether that's a good idea, how much it would cost to put more gravel down. So those were unfinished. These are definitely unfinished, which which we all felt like, well, we need to get Pete's time. Yes, yeah. and then and we kept saying he's so busy, yes. and 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 then we didn't feel the pressure because of the weather. But they aren't un they're not done yeah. for sure. They're still on our. There are a couple items still on our. It's, you know, even Johnny Brook Road and, and how that works, the opening and the closing of that is is still, someone's got to think about that and, and Bombardier Meadow next year, are we roping it again? Someone's got to do that. So it's not, it's not without work to be done yeah. for sure. Um, and even the V-Trans, I haven't even heard back from V-Trans people. Like they're so, everyone's so busy um, and these are so my kind of minor issues. I think Josh and I talked a little bit about this, yeah. the fact that, you know, 
Pete works with us beautifully. We, we, we are thrilled to work with Pete. As a group, we've kind of said, October 1st, that's the next time we're going to reach out to Pete about something because we know what he's going through right now. And he doesn't want to be sidetracked with parking signs and, and things. But, uh, but October 1st still gives us time to get something John's talking about straightened out. Some of the, We're talking about doing a widening parking area up at uh, Gillette's Pond and maybe trying to secure some of the fill they're taking out from the dam to build that. And and Mr. Lowe, Bob Lowe, is, is on board with having that on his property widened a little bit and things like that. But yeah, that and widening, we talked about widening by East, East Cochran Road there, things like that. But it feels like we're, we put out the fires. Mm -hmm. Um I personally don't think we should disband only because if a fire pops up, it's awful good to have this infrastructure ready to go as opposed to finding new people and starting from scratch and all those kind of things. But we, I think as much as anything, we want to make sure that we're not missing any expectations that you and the select board have of us um, or or a direction you would, you, you would, either one of you would want to see us go, I guess. Is that fair? That's fair. I think that's fair. Um, and and also just um, there's five of us and there's that's we can be quite a powerhouse of getting something done. We can split up and do things. And sometimes we just go like, what are we doing? <laughs> so, so, you know, like, like and again, I, I can't say enough about this summer has been kind of odd. Mm -hmm. So I have to take that into account. This, this may be asking the obvious, but are we all agreed that there is no um, other area of parking issues that we're overlooking. That we could not turn our attention to. I haven't heard people say that there is, but I just want to ask the audience is there anything else out there that we're missing with the project? Lisa, I'm aware of this. Okay, well, I'll, I was going to hold it and kind of keep it, you know, cloistered until well, it might be helpful to, to hear it. the list because I think that will help determine mm -hmm. what, what we do. Uh, is it going to be two weeks, once a month, once every two months? Okay, so, by the way, we've Matt, got the energy, the we've got the time. We just need a project. Well, I'll tell you, I've been watching your meetings for a year or so, maybe longer. And uh, I'm really impressed at what you guys have done and just how you do it. It's it's a uh, committee that's not like any other. Well, neither is the topic, but Parking is probably one of the most aggravating or assumed things that people come across. You know, they, they want to go somewhere. They don't think about parking. They just want to park and get it over with and get to their, their thing. But it can be a barrier uh, to enjoyment of a whole lot of things if it isn't done right. And we've seen that side of people, too. And there's been a lot of aggravation because there's a whole lot more people showing up than we can manage with, with their uh, infrastructure. You guys have solved some of those problems really well and effectively and you've worked the town i mean you've you've done there is no real lane for you to go outside of uh you've talked to pete you've talked to uh the constable you've talked to probably well i know you've talked to the police department um our police department um you guys have talked to various groups i think you know that have held um events on Cochran Road, but at least I hope they asked you about parking. I don't know if they have, but uh you guys have have done such a good job in figuring out the problems and finding solutions that you I think you've become a go-to resource for the town in general. And also um I think the various groups that hold events once a year or so uh I think they know to at least talk to you guys or send an email or something just to keep you in the loop. So you've actually reached that level of involvement where you're considered to be part of the process. Yeah. So I'd hate to see you disband. I mean, maybe you don't have to meet every uh, regularly, uh, but I think you the expertise that you all have developed in the course of doing what you've done is really valuable. And yeah, I think other people could learn it too, but you know, you know how long it took you to get up to speed on things. Well, it takes someone else that long too. So, I think uh, if you're willing to, you know, maybe you meet once a month or once a quarter, unless there's a topic. I'm not sure, but uh, maybe we give them a salary. <laughs> um, that's that's my feelings about it. I've learned a lot 
attending your meetings. I was asked to start attending Virginia Clark Planning Commission. Uh, asked several people on the Planning Commission to just start attending some of the other committees that are uh, having meetings. Just see what's going on. And I came to yours, and I went to um, the other one. I went to. I guess uh, I've gone to blank in a second. But right away, I didn't realize picking over the stone. You know how much stuff is involved in what you guys are doing. And I learned a lot. Just I didn't have any answers, but I sure heard a lot of questions. And it's a uh, it's an education that I probably wouldn't have gone anywhere else. So I thank you for that. And I think other people can benefit from that too if they attend your meetings. Everybody's got more to do than they can, you know, make time for for a meeting. But especially as we go into the winter, I think there might be people. I hope that pass through and do a Zoom, hook up on the Zoom, and see what you guys do and learn some things too, like I did. So, so thank you very much. I, but you have a list. Mm -hmm. I do. Okay, I'd like I'd like to hear. Okay. About um, now, I don't want to color your thinking. I don't want to pretend that these are from the board. They're from me. These are things that I have noticed or wondered about. Maybe not even that they're a problem, but I've just wondered. There may be an easy answer, in which case it's fine. But I thought about some things that we've struggled with in the past and I thought about some things that we're probably going to struggle with in the future. And I'll give you this list, but would you like me to read it or? Okay. Um, there's been a lot of times during the summer when the triple buckets draw large crowds. Yeah. The available parking in Dugway and Cockford East doesn't seem to be enough to accommodate it. Overrocker Park has some capacity, but it's quite a hike to the gorge. Are there any other options that the PSD sees? And you don't have to answer it, but that's just one of them. The property in Duxbury that uh, you and John told me about, um, I actually talked to um, Steve Brownlee from UMIAC, and it's not in his budget to do something like that. He said, just don't ask the landowner. I said, just go look at it. He said, I told him what the assessed value was, and it's a matter of record. And he said, that's out of his league. Not out of his league. It's out of his, I think it's out of his cash flow picture, so... He's not into buying properties. I think if somebody, I don't think the town, because that landowner won't work with the town, but maybe we have a third party, uh, that would be a really great solution for parking uh, for the gorge. But I don't know if you want it across the street from me, first of all. And, and second, I mean, it is there. But... There is, um, it, it is being, it's being closed uh, September 22nd, I think. What is it's being there's a buyer. Oh, there is there's a closing happening. Uh, do you know who it is? Oh, is it I um oh. personally do not mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So interesting. Uh, I do personally do not yet, but I will go meet them when they become our new neighbors. Yeah, oh yeah. It sounds like I believe it's a contractor. And um, okay, a contract so we have similar, similar to to the current owner. Yeah, that's perfect. That's got a great building. Okay. Um but they may be approachable. Well, yeah. Oh, I yeah. Think that's an interesting. Point. Well, a little extra income never hurt any business. Yeah. So. That they may mm -hmm. they may be interested if the mm -hmm. town would be. Yes. Or the town. It's of, it's yeah. we're we John I've been looking at that for several years. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but I don't want to hit them with too many things at once. I just want to say hi first. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, that's okay. Hey, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Is it, uh, it would be um, it, it, they have to they'll have some settling in they'll have you know expectations of their own uh, sure to feel it out they bought it for reasons yeah. absolutely and I haven't met them and so that's we a, will, that's fascinating that could be a we've always been watching it yeah, yeah. something they're not aware of that they have yeah. um, third thing was uh, various folks have proposed I keep hearing these. That the town build a parking lot for act, you know, for when people flood the village, for things that the college is green, or you name it, um, somewhere, you know, on, with somebody's land to serve the village and also overflow of volunteers green. And I just want to say, what do you guys think about that? You don't have to comment right now, but there's no town-owned land that seems to be suitable for parking, or or it's not close enough to the village. So, I mean, the village is pretty uh, spoken for, as far as I can see. 
in, in some way, that's what Overrocker is, you know, that it was, yeah, it's, it's uh, not particularly accessible. It's not well known yet, but right. it is, it, I, I think it's grown. Yeah. Uh, that might be a communication uh, it's a issue that the town could. Uh, when we talked to the trails people, they, they indicated I, that it was hard to find. Mm -hmm. I do have my ideas. What's that? I do have my ideas. <laughs> we okay. should talk. Well, you, it's, and that sort of, I mean, mm -hmm. the only other real parking issue that I can think of a lot is like people talk about parking in the village, right? It's not really recreational parking, but there's issues with people staying too long, how people get in and out up on the upper part, mm -hmm. tenant parking, um, overnight parking, which would be a different type of parking problem than you guys have been looking at. But, and I know you've sort of, I think, deliberately steered away from that, like, no, we're just recreation. But if you're really looking for a challenge, <laughs> that would be one with many layers and, and stakeholders to, to maybe to, to bite off. Mm -hmm. Kind of oddly, but we have had a number of people come to us asking where they're supposed to park when they plow and all those kind of things well, because is. because they think we're parking. We're not that kind of parking, but we hear that, you know, and, and, Mm -hmm. The thought is, if you wanted to have a parking area somewhere in Richmond that would work for that overflow, that would create foot traffic in Richmond, all those kind of things, yeah. mm -hmm. it, it would benefit Richmond, certainly, to have that. The, in our wheelhouse? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. And I mean, yeah. it's certainly more restricted up there. I don't know if we could use the Bonser's Green for anything, but in the winter, Bonser's Green being a grassy parking area is kind of unutilized mm -hmm. or, or right. unusable. Unless mm -hmm. that were to change, yeah. and that would be a big change. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to get into the gravel there, but like we're not finding solutions tonight. We're sort of we're talking yeah. about problems, just and stuff. concepts, and directions. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. And a question of my own, I guess, will there be some sort of after-season assessment of the Gillette Pond improvements, popularity, in other words, parking demand? Um, mm -hmm. it, we're not there yet, I think. But is there any plan that you guys have, or is someone uh, kind of assessing? What's been done? How it's being used? Is it enough? You know this kind of stuff because um, a lot of the things going on in Dugway and Gillette seem to have been seem to in the past have happened ahead of the town being there. We were kind of catching up a lot, but I think we're with the improvements going on. We know they're going to draw people, and I think there's an awareness on, on your part. But I know there is that. Okay, you know we've we've got preparations, we've got plan, but um, then how do we measure uh, success of it? So I was thinking, and I don't know if that should even be you guys. Maybe we need a, a professional of some sort to just you know, count cars, get license plates, figure out origin, destination, all that stuff. Like that. Mm -hmm. But um, that might be, if, if it does turn out to be as popular as I think it might be, um, we might need some expansion. Sure. I think I think we're we're in total agreement. We predict that that Gillette's Pond is going to be the next thing. Yeah, oh, and whether it's skating or whether it's going to be kayak and whatever it's yeah. going to be. And mm -hmm. so the Land Trust, I believe, has six or nine spots there. Mm -hmm. um, we reached out to the Girl Scout camp to see if there was some oh, deal we could work with their parking area, which is unfortunately between the buildings and the road. And they they kind of said, if you're doing a special event, skating weekend or something like that, let me know. You know, we'll open it up. We'll have the Girl Scouts do Coco or something. They were they were open to it, but they weren't really open to saying, you know, because it opens up. Yeah. You know, you get to see what's back there. Now you see all those buildings and the temptations become great. Um, again, we have suggested that that we widen the road just before, um, just basically across from the dam. Mm -hmm. Uh, a couple of apple trees right oh, there. And, and, yeah, and and Pete, we met with Pete a couple of times and mm -hmm. thought that was a possibility to widen that enough to let another eight to ten cars park there. Mm -hmm. now, John Lowe will tell you that there's a hundred cars up there on a busy weekend. So so we're we're thinking too small, but I'm not sure. Sometimes one of the problems we have is that the geographical draw of an area, triple buckets. Yep. is not matched by the parking capacity in the area. Right. Sometimes it's, it's inversely proportional, people, right? The natural words. Yeah. It'd be great if every natural swimming pool had a 10-spot parking lot next to it. Yeah. And some places just don't have that. It's like this. Yeah. And that's what makes them cool, right? Because it's so steep. The pools are deep and cold and it's cool down there and all that. It's but beautiful. And also you've got 21 feet of Dugway Road. With... <laughs> so great. I get it. Yeah. But, Okay. Um, and a couple other things. Um, does the PAC have a sense of how good or bad current parking availability it, parking availability is for the various summer bike races, walkathons, club events that happen mostly on Cochrane Road? 
Concord Road seems to be the best for events like this because it's flat. It's out of the way of village congestion. But where do folks park? And again, Overrocker might be the, maybe we just put any of these groups. We had, a, I think, a race over Labor Day weekend, or bike race or foot a thon or something. But, um, I don't know, but it's, we've had several things this summer. I don't know if maybe we need to give them more upfront detail or advice on parking, or maybe we are doing that. I'm not sure. They're doing I think one of those answers is, um, which we don't give enough credit to, uh, is Cochrane Ski Area. And they really take the brunt of all of the the race and biking. Parking. Okay, so that's very generous. I've heard some of them went there. They're very generous with the lower parking area. People just can park and go for a bike ride. And mm -hmm. without them, I think we'd be really in 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 a much harder spot. They really take mm -hmm. they have a wealth of parking up there and they they are very open. It's like come park, we don't care. And if they've been fantastic. Um mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that leads into uh, what we found with the Bombardier Meadow, you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you could ever put enough parking for, for all that, you know, once it's there, once Gillette Pond opens, once Gillette Pond's, the shoulder thing opens, once we, there will be days where all that parking and more will be taken because it's going to be a beautiful, it already is a beautiful spot, I just mm -hmm. love Gillette Pond. Um, in the okay. same way as Dugway, it doesn't matter how much that there's going to. So in some ways, mm -hmm. we've said this often in our group, is we need the, the town to, not just you, Josh, but the select board, the, the planning, I don't know who does it, but to say like, these are our, you know, these are our recreational desires. This is how many mm -hmm. bike races we're going to have, how many foot races we're going to have, how many this we're going to have, and this is... Mm -hmm. The demand on the parking and the demand on the enforcement, because those two like play together. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what we all do with parking without the enforcement part. It, mm -hmm. It's yeah. What you know, since you brought that up, Dan, what's your your sense, the whole community, I guess, of how well or poorly the enforcement went? I know we got caught a little flat footed, and we well, we started the word changing signs. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh once the parking uh violent parking ticket fees went up and towing started happening in earnest a lot of people seem to get the message i haven't heard of a big furball since then is that your um, observation on on Duckley? I, i'm not sure whether what we did make it made a difference or we just had such horrible right. weather that that it's not a good test mm -hmm. you know i i it's funny because i a friend of mine got a parking ticket that he showed me, and it was a twenty-five dollar ticket. Oh, cheap one! Yeah, and because the tickets weren't, we didn't print new tickets, <laughs> oh, so we're oh. still giving out twenty-five dollar tickets. That guy got very lucky. <laughs> very lucky. <laughs> That's right. Get him on. He's something. a good guy too. <laughs> Keep the rush. Just anecdotally, like I, was, so I think I think the whole river east cock or whatever we just think this year was just kind of a bookmark we we're really not going to make any yeah, we were decisions kind of cross current one yeah. thing i was very much aware of because i watched it in the way time is there was an astonishing amount of filling on certain days mm -hmm. and that was uh, gratifying to see i guess people so, so hopefully that amount of filling the word will start going out maybe to people mm -hmm. and i just and maybe this is just um one of, but last night when I was walking the dog, there were two guys that got out of the pickup, and they were talking with great care about exactly where the travel portion is or where it's not, and are we off the travel portion? And I heard that they been walk by, and I said, "You're good," <laughs> but they have gotten the message mm -hmm. from somewhere right. that. Um, because they did, they they were very clear that they didn't want to be towed, and they had heard about towing. So mm -hmm. I, I think next summer will be a good time. Good. Well, you're right. Enforcement is there's nothing else like it. You know, it's when people <laughs> keep pushing and pushing, suddenly enforcement comes up, and they and some they can't get around. I was telling some fall in last night, and mm -hmm. trying very hard to get off the top of portion. I managed to tip her comment into a deep ditch oh. off the road that required the lanes to come out, but. Point is, she was also somebody paying attention. Mm -hmm. 
I think it will be interesting to see what happens next year, though, because I know early July before the floods, they tore and ticketed a lot of cars, and mm -hmm. I got a lot of appeals and complaints. And then there was a, it was CAX maybe came up into the story. Yeah. And so, like, there was huge presence, I felt, of that. But then all of a sudden, the flooding hit, and the rivers were sort of unsolvable, probably mm -hmm. still today mm -hmm. to some extent. So, I'd love mm -hmm. to see probably have to hit a similar enforcement early next year as well. I mean, we have we have agreed that, that there could be a little more signage in that two mile area. So too. And we kind of didn't want to micromanage Pete too much. I think to be honest, if Pete would have followed up on it if he had a minute a minute to breathe. So we've kind of made up a new sign and, and we're gonna submit it to Pete. And it seems like there's three signs there that say no parking that should be replaced with no parking this side of the road. And then there's four more spots where signs that go up with posts mm -hmm. and say the same thing. And it's, just, it's these tempting little spots that you try to pull into. Um, yeah. So we, we're not done there yet, but I, th I think we're on the right path. I think clear signage would be helpful. When I drove it, it was kind of easy to miss that first one as you're heading south. Because it's just the way it's slightly angled. <laughs> Funny it is. Yeah, and I was like, oh, I had to go back and be like, oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I didn't deny. I mean, I didn't uphold any appeals. But like... I'm like, yeah, I can see why it's missed. So we, we've actually made up a new sign without an arrow on it that'll be mounted on that same post perpendicular. Okay. So yeah, it's in your face now when you're coming up. Yeah, if you get and, like a mild marker, just yeah, put that on both ends. Yeah. And uh, so really get your attention. That's not you know, in an email to Pete, but yeah, uh, yeah. Well, it, I think when it snows, he's going to have a lot of time. Yes. <laughs> he'll, he'll finally feel like the winter's the bad time. <laughs> so, uh, the road, it's it's too too memory thing is the same sort of, you know, uh, thing happened. In, was it 2021 when we thought we fixed everything and, mm. and not, you know, it was a nice quiet season. Everything was great. And then the next year, was it 2021? Yeah. So we had. We had tried some fixes. Okay. 2021 was a, a kind of a strange year because of the end of COVID. I don't know exactly what year. And we sort of kind of walked away and then 2022 blew up again. Yeah. So I do think that we're going to have to uh, watch. And, you know, I think it's just important to realize that that is going to happen again. We're going to have to watch and be vigilant. It's going to snap back. Yeah, I think so. Um, can I comment on at least one of your points oh, sure. about, uh, you know, I think one piece of work that we need to do is, is as a town is we have a town plan and we talk about, you know, how much residential and how much land a house, you know, needs to be uh, a house site needs and where you can put your sewage. But we don't we've never had a plan for what the recreational load of these sites would be. And it might be, I don't know who the, whose purview it would be, but to actually talk about a town plan that talks about how much resident, how much, uh, recreational usage we want of these spaces because we we really are kind of going well we know we know too much when we see it but if we're not careful uh demand will continue to go and, and eventually those mm -hmm. sites will get worn out so i think it might be very good for the town to actually gather the right people together and decide what is a sustainable amount of recreational use of all of these resources because otherwise we don't have a basis for saying is this too little is it too much yeah. It's a hard problem, but we we legislate everything else. Okay. Yeah, that's a good because I was wondering as we're talking to you, like you guys have probably talked to the trails committee a bit as far as like what their needs are. And then the other one that I'm sure you're all aware of that's sort of next and it's actually next on your list mm -hmm. is the Asian community forest. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, when they finally are able to put more trails in there, which might be a couple years away at this point. I think you're right. There's going to be a need for more than the 12 cars or so. Yeah. yeah. There's no people will be coming from elsewhere um, into the town on foot that would run bikes, but I don't know if they're going to turn around and go all the way back either. I'm not sure. Yeah. That's a whole lot of questions. Yeah. yeah. So that's so, a, that's a great example. There's the Andrews Community Forest. You, now that we've gone through Thank this, you. The list do, do they have a plan? Oh, okay. Yeah, do no, they no. have a plan in place for parking or? Or, I mean, that's the whole point is, is like, I actually don't know that that's, it was great. The land trust, you know, with the Gillette Pond, they were able, it's always in their mind. <laughs> so this past experience of like, okay, is there any possibility now, you know, who's going to come here and is there any off street parking available? Um, 
Mm -hmm. uh, just like all of our town actions should also have like, okay, we're going to have these events. Where's our parking going to be? Mm -hmm. And also, I, I feel like this is a question for you, Josh, and, and maybe in the select board is, I would like to see the ability to use temporary signs like by the you know that that just might might be for a weekend or a week or the high season or fourth of july whatever it be like no parking by order of the town of richmond you know i i see it all over the place you know whether there's construction in burlington or something there's these just regular old signs that they put up temporarily it's not an ordinance change it just yeah. happens to be a seasonal thing mm -hmm. which might help us like say on you know July pond if we if the if we reach a point where recreational is high for I don't know the a couple of those weekends that that we can predict that there's gonna be a lot of people maybe we can not have an ordinance change but have a you know for the next two Special weekends is great weather for skating from here to here we're gonna you know put parking and drop this I don't know I mean the, see the thing is oh, that yeah. if we can think of them as events like yeah. like Dugway is pretty good except for those you know x amount of weekends when the temperature is a certain temperature like mm -hmm. Gillette Pond is going to be great except for you know this kind of right. event yeah. so no, no, it's almost a recreational peak mm -hmm. so I, I feel like I don't think we always need an ordinance change when we're just having recreational peak moments and how can we modulate those peak moments and so say we we say no parking on X amount of roads, but we have this big race coming up. And why don't we just like put up some barriers and say parking from here to here from Saturday, you know, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Or mm -hmm. though I think if we could just add a little flexibility without big bylaws happening, <laughs> might help. It's just a suggestion. So it would be sort of the opposite of like no parking temporarily. We allow parking. Allow temporary. parking or no parking for, you know, there might be something going on. Um, and there, there tends to be parking. Uh, like I think of, I don't know if you've been following like that one thing. Is it Wilcock? There's a, there's a spot that everybody stops to take the pictures, Instagram pictures. Yeah, have you followed that in VT Digger? Oh yeah, that barn is beautiful. Right, right. It's right. Been it's beautiful. Like, it's beautiful. Really like, like the road gets like nobody can move on this road. And so now this is the first year where they're just like closing this whole road except for residents of the village mm -hmm. because it's overwhelming. There's hundreds and hundreds of people stopping. Oh. So I'm thinking like a seasonal thing, right? I think it, it might be nice for us to be more flexible yeah. for those things. So I think it would, I mean, there's a, it would have to go into the ordinance to get a lot of that flexibility. As far as I understand, there's a spot in the ordinance right now that talks about like the town manager, I think in consultation with the reform, can shut, or maybe the site board can shut down parking like for construction or things like that. Okay. Um, so I would maybe research other ordinances or to get some advice from BLCT if there's a way to add flexibility. And it might need to be a select board thing so that it's not so it's an official body that we say, okay, we're gonna allow parking the travel portion or in Dugway on this weekend because of whatever. Mm -hmm. Um and I think you'd still have to figure out like emergency vehicles and make sure, you know, there'd be a few things to add to that. Probably but, some volunteers to help. <laughs> yeah, but maybe like in special circumstances with certain things set in place to allow that flexibility. But you, I think there'd be some setup work to that. But I think you could do it. It just have to follow process to get there. That be our parking ordinance, you think, Josh? Or yeah, or in the parking just, just that, or yeah, I think you have to use add it. Um, I don't think I think I just said go in the parking ordinance because it'd be yeah. on the travel portion or in a roadway. Yeah, so it's all so right. how do you yeah. like figure out a process to allow temporary parking that mm -hmm. otherwise maybe wouldn't be allowed? Yeah. There, there some town must have thought of this at some point in some other Area. Okay. Do I see a, a, a possible getting together a select board time maybe mm -hmm. in the October or November or something like that? And we could continue our meetings and see where we as a group want to go. And maybe is there any other thoughts that any of you have? You know, well, do, feel free to see a meeting yeah. as you brought that up. And I'm wondering if for now. It would be okay to decide to meet once a month rather than twice. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean we don't do an extra one with the select board or something like that. Um, but I'm, I'm not convinced it needs to be every two weeks. But um, 
I signed on and I'll do what people want to do. But, um, but I'm just, you know, it seems like for now, there's nothing overly pressing. So do we need to do it every month? One of the things I need to better get a better understanding of is the open meeting laws. So if we meet once a month, great. But in the meantime, we're doing things. We're meeting with Pete. We're doing things like that. And, and we're going to email out the results of those conversations at all. Mm. You know, and, and you want to be careful that you're not having a conversation in that email that isn't privy to everybody. So I can send out an email to everybody and say, don't respond. <laughs> you know, because if you yeah. if you give me your opinion on that, well, then we then we started the discussion. Josh, is is they are they held to the same standard the select board is? Yeah. yeah okay. Where, one, any so. formally set up committee or whatever yeah. has the same. Yeah. So you could distribute that information, and then I think the general rule of thumb is like you said, you don't talk about it back and forth on email. Um, and then you, best practice is then you talk about it in your next meeting. You say, oh, we took follow up with Pete on this. Here's what he said. You all saw that email last week, mm. and then you can have that conversation. So that's kind of what we've been doing. And we'll sometimes split up, like, you know, Chuck and I will go do Dog Bay Road and, then, you know, then we'll, you know, bring somebody else in, but not create three. Uh, mm -hmm. Just try to, um, I think we all, when we were doing Dog Bay Road, we all ended up walking Dog Bay Road with different people. Different partners. Yeah, different partners. Yeah. Because it was just like, we're just yeah. like looking at all that's this That's the spirit stuff. of the law, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. We walked yeah, a lot right. of, I've walked Dog Bay so many times. Yeah. 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 I'm um, a bad one to give you advice in the open meetings. I seem to violate it about every couple of weeks, uh, according to you, DJ. You've gotten much more. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I wasn't trying to violate it I ever, know. but I finally got to the point of really trying not to violate yes. it. Yeah. And occasionally I still kind of go It'll be blind. On the side. It's hard. So, I mean, because yeah. you're so used to just like, I'm going to talk about this on email. Yeah. <laughs> well, I actually yeah. sent, I, I replied to someone's uh, email about speed bumps mm -hmm. and wrote back to the resident. You know, it was just the things that I knew. And I thought, all the stuff I'm telling her is from the public information. It's mm -hmm. it's on our website or it's been discussed mm -hmm. in media, whatever. But it still wasn't okay to send that to the whole board. And I, I still struggle with that one. I don't see the the danger of doing that until Jay comes and just don't mm -hmm. do that. But I, I won't do it. But I'm still looking for a proper way to me. We said we had talked about this inter-organizational hoedown, you know. Yeah, the, I, I think that There'd be like a, just as an aside. I think there's great value in having the, the committees, even if we don't merge their function, know what each other are doing. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard to do that other than listening in, either attending their meetings or listening in when they're in front of the select board. Right. And I don't know, we, we haven't really talked about this. Uh, yeah, let me just butt in because I think that would be great for other committees to hear what you guys are doing, vice versa, and for maybe this, the public to hear that, <clears throat> oh, wow, I think there's a lot more going on than most people realize. Did you hear about that? What we were talking yeah, about. Yeah. Yeah. Josh said in conversation. Yeah. Yeah. That's just too hard to do. Okay, I know I asked BLCT for some advice. And I, if we invite the public. Yeah. I think, mm -hmm. is it, sure, I have to go back and read it. Yeah. If things happen since then. But mm -hmm. I think it was, you know, like, yeah, if you invite the public and maybe had it as a warned meeting of like mm -hmm. the select yeah. board and people just sort of come up and talk. And a video. I mean, that the, the idea of like the barbecue, yeah, you have so much fun. Um, I don't know how you really. Do that though without you know. They're just worried about like you know we'll mm -hmm. have a conversation. Business or is getting done or something. Business like, is getting yeah. done. Basically, yeah. yeah. If, if, the, if, the, if the town didn't organize that, the different organization organized that, and invited town committee representatives to talk about what they do. Mm. That mm. interesting. Several years ago, the land trust yeah. did an annual meeting where we brought in all the different recreational mm. groups to get a sense of what the overlap was and it's really valuable they each spoke for five minutes and it was really uh, yeah i mean i think as long as there's not a quorum of of, of that of the committee there yeah. it would be participating but if you're thinking about something more structured like that mm -hmm. like that's where i think it could be a select board meeting that says like we want to we're going to have a committee night yeah we want to hear from 15 minutes from every committee and then it's work. warned and everybody can come up and talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, and then there could be like public comment afterwards. And if you were in the potluck, Jay would probably bring in some muffins or something. He's always good to take a few things. Um, but that that would be a way to do it. That way you could have a forum of every committee in town there and it would be a warm public meeting. Mm -hmm. I think that's the way to go. I think that's the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that is 
a great idea. But I also, what Virginia Clark mentioned about spreading you all out to go on different committees. And I think we should have that conversation. Maybe we want to pick a, a committee and then maybe not necessarily attend their meetings, but we should maybe read their minutes and kind of like, you know, or attend the meetings is sort of, that's a thought. Um, all right. Is there anything else that anyone else wants to say about this? I feel like um, I really appreciate you giving your opinion. And I, I hear, yes, you find that it's still, the pack is still valuable. And yes, this is kind of like a one-off kind of summer. Maybe we shouldn't make any decisions necessarily now. Mm -hmm. um, I think we do need to go and just present ourselves at the select board and say what's going on and, and what's new and what's not new and what we've been thinking about. We don't have a lot to report, but we can, I think it's great to have a conversation. But I think you've got, you know, a decent amount to say, like, kind of like recap of the summer, that it was perfect. not maybe a, a perfect summer to evaluate. I think that list of sort of smaller items that, that you're working on would be great. And then well, maybe there's something you can incorporate from Lisa's list. Mm -hmm. And at that point, yeah, you might find somebody in the board or somebody in the public says, hey, what about this? You know, All right. there's always yeah. a few things out there. The other thing I always think about, too, is, you know, I know this is sort of the opposite of your idea of should it be disbanded and put in other committees. But how much, and maybe you're already doing this to some extent, but like when a committee comes up with a parking issue, like Andrew's Community Forest or Trails, or even planning, you know, maybe they would come to you and just say, hey, we've got this section in town, how could you help us here? Hmm. And then you're sort of the consultant to those other committees. You get to wear ropes. <laughs> mm. Why not? Mm. <laughs> uh, Big wigs too. You know, okay, names. that's, we can, we should have that conversation if we, yeah. Um, I did notice a, a couple of things I want to ask you. One is, um, how do you want our communication with you? Because we often, sometimes don't know what to do should there be like one person that talks to you or you don't mind that we all talk to you like i'm all like 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 how does because we don't really have a chair and we haven't gone on that route yet we've talked about it but none, no one really wants to take it on <laughs> so we, we move it around sure i mean it's for me it's you know it'd be helpful for maybe one person per topic or two people per topic so that way it's not a, a bunch okay. of people but yeah if it's a different person for a different topic that's I did think of one other thing that, you know, some of us have been on the committee for a long time and we've talked about having, you know, rolling members like it was really mm -hmm. helpful to bring in mm -hmm. new members. And if there, if you find somebody who's interested, I mean, mm -hmm. we, we're probably the, the load would be like if we could bring in some new members, and some of us could roll off. Sure. Uh, but I think it probably makes sense to do it around the areas that are you know, interested, like if somebody has a particular interest in July Pond. Mm -hmm. But if you if the select board comes across people or you and your your role, find somebody who might be interested. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll definitely keep my ears open. I mean another way to do it is, you know, if you wanted to I know there was talk about filling seats sort of midterm at some point as well. Mm -hmm. You know, if you wanted to put out a notice of front porch forum to say, you know, we would be interested in new applicants because there's some people that might want to get off before their term is up. That way, at least it sort of lets people know and, and, and maybe put a list of, hey, here's some things we're thinking about. And if you have an area that you're interested in, you know, bring it to us as well. It can kind of serve two purposes potentially. We are all a little shy of Front Porch Forum. Well, I could also help you with the, with Thank the you. post. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. How would you write the post as you put it out there? Uh, yeah, the committee was like, hey, look, you know, we want to do a post about like looking for new membership and new okay. interests. I'd be happy to put that out okay. there. I, I don't want to get into a back and forth battle on front porch form any more than anybody else. So but if it's more just from the town. From the town, we're looking like we do that all the time. I just okay. did one today for the new park project committee. Like we're looking for members. Mm -hmm. Submit your application. I'm not going to debate you on whether it's a good idea to have the committee or not, but if you want to be on it, tell me. That's, That's a great well. idea. So we could write up a front porch form and Josh can um Maybe this is an open meeting question, but do you have to advertise? I mean, what I was thinking is that if if, if you and your in all of your positions come across somebody who has the right, you know, has a particular insight, particular mm -hmm. skill, or you know, lack of social life, or whatever it is that <laughs> makes them good for this party. Um, no, but I mean, do, do, do we have to publicly like warn that we're looking for members, or could you sometimes recommend? 
I mean, if you've got a vacant seat and it's going to be filled, you don't have to like put anything out. If somebody's like, hey, so there's a vacant seat, I want to be on that. There, mm -hmm. there you go. And, it, and I think when there is, you know, every year when we look for new members or like terms are up, people mm -hmm. will often mm -hmm. reach out to their neighbors or hear from their neighbors. Um, I'm not sure, you know, if it's something where somebody wanted to get off the committee midterm and they should have brought their buddy in. Hey, this person will do it. Mm -hmm. Um but even that, I mean, it's hard to get volunteers. I bet if you went to the select board and said, I'd like to leave and Jim is going to take my spot, it's all going to work out great. Yeah. The board might consider that. Yeah. But this this is a now new regular committee of the town. It is. It's, with not an ad hoc or interim. No, it was established in, yeah, I think yep. December 2020 well, to address parking. Yeah. So it would be the select board that would make that appointment. Yeah. And that was um, a, a new um, uh, interesting thing. We started getting, um, you all were asking us to respond to some people about parking through Front Porch Forum or you know privately through Front Porch Forum, mm -hmm. which is okay. But I think that was new to us. I think uh, I talked to you, Chuck, about like, what's that protocol and how are we doing this? So that was a new, you were kind of on the sidelines and, uh, we we all answer questions. We don't mind that, and we keep you know mm -hmm. keep it light, and we invite them to come here to bring their concerns. And nobody's followed us up on that yet, but but we still keep saying that's some great ideas. Why don't you come Monday night six o'clock? And uh, and yeah, so um, that was. Yeah, a new I think we've agreed that we can uh, on the front board forum thing that we will email directly the person who brought up the point and copy the group and that way we miss yes. we speak like you i'm i'm not looking to throw out there in a public forum and and draw that attention uh, so we've done it with with you know several people regarding parking issues and, and you know what 50 mm percent -hmm. of them you explain your point and you say if you feel like it come to the meeting and they come to the meeting yeah. you know and and that's that flies in the face of the the keyboard commando board forum mindset. Yeah. You know that we just got good people. You know, and and that's good. Anyone else from anything else from anybody else? Anything else you wanted to share or ask of us? I'm sure it'll come up with something. <laughs> can, you know how to find can us. Can we get a soft copy of your list? Sure. Email that. Um, email. Uh, how about? Yeah, actually, I can just send it to you. You can just stick that. Yeah. On the minutes. And... Yeah, I, I've I've got the list, but okay. Uh, but... I'll also say I think it's you have done fantastic work. It's been amazing in different waves, and I think it's terrific. I think it's good foresight to say that some of the areas that are quiet will not remain quiet. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there will be areas like economic development, so the town, the village, will be so to have. It's a it's a funny committee because it costs, it cuts across so many. It's transportation, it's you know, it's planning, and there nobody's looking at it comprehensively. So I think it's uh, a great asset, and I know we'll need a place to go in the future. So to have a committee that's familiar with the issues um, would be a great resource. I personally rely very heavily on that word advisory. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I just go for your advisory, and, and I think we do a really good job of talking about the issues and going out and bringing more information in and looking at other points of view and and being wrong. We're, we're, I'm amazed how many times we're like, oh my God, that did not work out. <laughs> so let's really think about that again. Um, yes. Uh, all right, then I think if you are, thank you very much. You can. Thank you all. all of you. Thank, you. Uh, thank you all. all the um, three of you and did you want me to hang out for updates or? I would love to. Dan, let me, I'll send you my list thank you. on who I think. Do you uh, want it? Yeah, so if it. Since we can't send it to you. Wherever you got, send you it to you. Right, yeah. right. Can you send it to all of us? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I won't sign it. No, I, 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 think no, I think you can send it to us. We think can't that has to be part of the minute. So yeah. it's a It'll be part of the yeah. presented yeah. document. Who's. Um, well, let's see how many. You can just, if you if you don't have it, just send it to me and I will send it to everybody. Or I can scan it. Okay. Okay. It will be very easily done. You thank you both, you Josh. Thank you. Yeah. Sometimes we, you know, we treat you like Pete. Like, should we talk to oh. Josh? Should we not talk to Josh? Because, uh, and uh, and uh, we had, we often have a lot of like, should we follow that up with with us? So I really appreciate maybe every so often just saying, hey, can you just come talk to us? Sure. We feel yeah. um, 
I mean, we do have Matt Buckley who who has been on other other committees in the past, which a is a very helpful um, because we often we don't know all the ins and outs of how to do things. But thank you. Well, I'll never hesitate to reach out. I mean, I can't always make every night meeting, but if you have a question, I can answer. And, and during like regular business you. hours, or get some research reports in the right direction. Sometimes it might take me a little while to respond, but I'm always happy to try to help. Thank you. So, yeah. Really um, appreciate that. Of really. Well, thank you for all you guys are doing. It really is been a lot. <laughs> As you all know. So thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank it makes for a long day for you, but we'll appreciate oh, it. It's, uh, it is what it is. Okay. <laughs> really good. Take care. Uh, thanks. 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 Actually, I think I have all of you in my email list. There you go. I've got John, I've got Chuck, I've got John Rankin. Um, Diane, or yep. I only got Diane. It's uh, GM. That's all I am. Okay. <laughs> it was first on GM. It's kind of cool, isn't it? I was just like, oh, okay. And then I said, oh, they have Diane there. So are we internet? And they have, <laughs> don't have you. Matt Buckley. Uh, yeah, M. Buckley, B P A T T Y B U C K L B Y. V P A T T Y at G M. U T. Jim, to, to, um, do, do you just want to just talk to us right now of any updates? And I know that things have been quiet up at the July Pond. Yeah, I think this is sort of like breaking news, perhaps not in since they for full public, but the dam will not get complete this fall. Um, oh. The water essentially has been what they found when they the, the process is they're supposed to lower the dam for a certain process to permit them to do the, put in the copper dam and do the construction and the amount of water and rainfall and what they found when they went to create the proper channel, not gonna permit them to do that um, in a timeline that will get the work done before winter comes. Um, and there were delays because of all the flooding and then the work, they got pulled from the work, which you know, we sure. understood that. So just the confluence of events means we're probably going to pick this back up in the spring. So there is there is not a parking lot there now. There is a cleaned area where the construction has been working. I don't love to take a look at it to see whether people will try to park in there, but it's not really uh, you know a formal lot at this point. And um, there are no plans to plow it either. We, we this is something that this is even this has occurred this since we've even had our last meeting. Yeah. So we actually have a meeting next week. And we'll be talking through the consequences of this. Okay. Um, there had not been a plan. There, I doubt there'll be a plan to plow that lot this year. I don't know if it's even in good shape to do that. Uh -huh. um, but we'll, but we'll see. And the condition of the pond itself will be unchanged from last year. I think will be essentially unchanged from okay. last year. So, and there's, and no, there's no downside. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it just put off till it's late spring or something like that. Yeah. When it gets when to be. season is done. Yeah. So the uh, so are they moving out? Have they moved their equipment? Are they all? Yeah, I don't know. What, I haven't been up there recently, but I think they're moving. pulling it all out. Yeah, that's so disappointing. Yeah, it is. You know, it's. I mean, it it is what it is. Um, you know, it's uh, extensions on permits, and um, you know, when we we pushed it to see whether we could get the right um, permissions to find another way to lower the volume, um, and it really it's a uh, the number of layers of state oversight um, didn't make it happen. So who's the governing authority on that? Is that the Army Corps or somebody you're talking to about how much, how quickly and how much you can lower? It was, um, it wasn't an easy answer. Um, as much as I can share with you, not that it's, it's that I don't know, I wasn't the point person. Um, it's, you know, it's fish and wildlife. Um, it's whoever regulates dam safety. It's, um, uh, it was a number of, of layers and we just couldn't get them all lined up. Everyone we talked to said, okay, yeah, you can do that, but we just couldn't get them all lined up in time. Um, essentially. Yeah, so we got every it's an ambitious project. Yeah. Uh, is the uh um is the site dangerous at that high level or uh, I have no idea. I don't yeah. I don't think so. Absolutely uh, not. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. So it's, it's dangerous in terms of the dam, That's the dam that is there. Yeah. I don't think any more than it, it, it was right than it was before. Oh. I guess um, it's going to cost additional money. For um, to be determined. Um, so, so that's why they call them dams. Uh, yeah. Yes, this has been a long. We're going to get there. I think so. It's not like um, 
yeah, um, we're, we're going to get there. But that just means the consequence. It's a it's a big project, and yeah. twenty years from now, nobody's going to remember that it took a year longer to get it done. So yeah, exactly. I appreciate yeah. that. And it's one of those things. It's you know, um, the rules make it a big project. You mm -hmm. know, there's going to be more concrete, more everything than probably some of us thought was really required to mm -hmm. solve the problem. But you can't just you know mm -hmm. dump a big load, couple loads of stone and you know say it's good for another hundred years. <laughs> um, that's not the way they work. So. Okay. Um, what that'll mean, I think it's really good foresight to say that when we create a small lot, it might even elevate the, uh, you know, um, visibility of that resource and increase that. Probably the case. It's not an alignment when we look, you know, speaking with the Richmond Land Trust, when we look to conserve a parcel and we create a small amount of parking, we don't necessarily have that integrated plan that says, wow, it's going to increase the use. Typically, when we conserve it, requirement is that there is public access. Um, it doesn't mean that there has to be parking, but that there is public access. And so sometimes the act of conserving a parcel or doing work does elevate it. Mm -hmm. And it'll be interesting to see what happens there. So I think the work to continue to create additional parking, I don't, I don't know how many times we overload the load on Gillette Pond already. I mean, prior to all of this, through the history, always New Year's Day, you know, always certain days. But um, whether we... Now the big collective we could create eight or ten spots along the road there and have you know six or eight spots there. I bet that would meet the need a lot of the season. Um, and um, and I love the idea of saying, hey, today today only special, you know, park on one side of the road and yeah. Thank you, kid. It, it takes a it takes a a different set of volunteers to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Like I do remember those New Year's days. That was the place to be. Yeah, right. yeah. The yeah. My my personal feeling in the parking up there is that that everyone involved agrees that there needs to be some leniency on the parking up there during skating. Yeah. Nobody is going to go on the record saying we're not going to ticket cars up there. Right. But they're not going to ticket cars up there. That's my personal feeling. You know, because right. it'd be a liability issue for either the police or the town to say. Ignore the law, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? So anyway, yeah, and the neighbors have been super supportive up there. You know, the Lowell family in particular. They're motivated. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so that's the update there. Um, we'll be revisiting the plans for Bombardier. You know, it's just been a busy, been a busy season from land trust activity wise, and so it's actually been a blessing to not do anything on that, um, and. You can say it kind of worked out um, for this year. So the so the po possibility of a turnaround and an ADA parking lot is still under discussion. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. One question. Uh, I noticed that they uh, hate it. Mm -hmm. uh, was that planned or was that always planned? Or? Yeah. Yeah. And that's been a consistent thing, practice for, uh, I think, for, yeah, mm -hmm. for some time. Yeah, in fact, the parking, in fact, interfered with the hang, you know, the size and the need to, need to do it. So, um, so we'll be revisiting that. Similarly, the plan to take the secondary beacon lot and convert that to be the permanent lot. You know, the wetness just reiterated how poor that small existing canoe access lot is. And um, except for the, the big days, the other lot held up pretty well. Mm -hmm. So, um, so all still um still planned that's great because i just as, as i was driving i looked over at the, the yeah. mud, mud puddle down yeah. there yeah it's and that is a a lot that traditionally we have plowed in the winter mm -hmm. that small lot for people who just want to access the trail the ski whatever um and so i think that would be our plan it's not our plan for this winter at this point mm -hmm. well we'll talk about it in october mm -hmm. whether we keep that that secondary lot open and plowed in place, but it's not an improved lot at this point. So that's probably why we won't plow it yet. No. I do know Pete does plow over Rocker, which mm. gives access to the trails. Yeah. So maybe the need is not as great. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Yeah, that's a good conversation to have because we could avoid the expense and if somebody stuck down there, that would be great. Yeah. I think those are three. Great. The hot spots. Yeah. Um, Dugway, Dugway is its own issue. We'll be having a bigger conversation about Dugway just in terms of in the floods, we put up additional in river signage. And of course, it all got washed away. And then, we, of course, we had a couple of tragic yeah. uh, 
human and animal incidents. Uh-huh. And so we need a better solution and that's under active conversation. So what he's talking about is, so as you approach the the falls, you know, like any place that you usually approach, you know, if you're paddling, there's all these warnings that you're approaching falls and they Lou and, and put up those buckets that said approaching falls and I mean, did somebody else, should somebody else take that on? Like who, who does it like across the Waterbury dam, you know, the Waterbury dam, there's those. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Well, we're talking about different solutions. The, the the shared steward that we had through the Vermont river conservancy, I think was sponsored with the funding sponsoring organization, um, assisted us with that. And they're there to assist us again, Mm -hmm. whether we actually do something we've talked about, you know, cable ideas and, and other things like that. And I think we'll have to, I don't know what the solution will be, and that's not the purview of this committee, but something we're gonna to have to revisit. Um, I don't even think it's the purview of the Richmond Land Trust. Seems like that should be some no, river group, uh, you know, like uh, Fish and Game, or who does the Waterbury Dam one? I mean, or the now, or the, the one that's in Essex, or all the other ones I've seen. Uh, yeah, you know, probably, I'm not speaking from expertise mm-hmm. here, but it probably depends upon the ownership. We do own the gorge, and I think it's just sort of viewing it as a moral responsibility. Mm-hmm. That's what I understand. I the Army Corps manages all the dams. Um, they take care of all the dams there, so. um, It is an okay question to, to ask. I think the, the, the fair answer is that there's a landowner liability law or freedom from liability law that was actually um, sponsored and passed um, by our own state representative, Gary Bresser, when he was in the legislature many years ago, that basically says if you make a recreational resource open, leave a resource resource open for recreational purposes, you are shielded from liability. Um, And so I'm sure we would take a look at that in terms of, but I don't hope that signage would not uh, violate that. You know, again, not problem. Can I just throw this out? Not problem solving for y'all, but I do know um, at the Waterbury Dam downstream Mm -hmm. from it, Mm -hmm. um, a little river dam Mm -hmm. that there's, there's, I don't know if there's light, but there's definitely sirens Sirens. for when there's an increase uh, rise in water. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've never heard it, but I did see the signage for that. It's pretty. The signs are really drown. Yeah, yeah says, pretty. Ex- says. You've seen them probably too. They're pretty explicit. I go, oh, yeah. Thank I'm you. wondering, just uh, this is a great discussion. I'm wondering if we should close the parking advisory meeting. Yeah. And then we can all sit around and talk. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm just thinking about the subject matter. Yeah, that's and, true. And, yeah. And, and we're recording. Yes. And, and we're it's getting, all good. Good point. And we're getting, <laughs> and you're on <laughs> minutes. <laughs> and we're getting far afield here. So. Um, well, we have Jim, Jim here. Is there anything else for that we should? Thank you. Sorry. I'm, nope. I'm it's be, all good. Doing my lawyer thing. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Any other questions for Jim on? Is there a, a does it make sense to get a try to get a member from RLT on this committee? We Point used blue. to have one. Yeah. And uh, you know, again, trying to be unbiased mm-hmm. and stuff, but since so many of the properties a very interesting point. I just thought that that yeah. was very helpful. Yeah. Um you I mean you're sort of a, almost uh, an adjunct there. member. Yeah. Back over there. <laughs> the name that was thrown out oh new committee member. Yeah. Um I'd be happy to bring it up. I'm just thinking that, that might be good. Would that be a voting member? That's a good question. What do you think about the fairness of that? I mean I, I don't know. Uh I well, think we all have have to be as impartial as we can, but yeah. Everybody comes to everyone will have some agenda, but I think that you have enough properties here. Sometimes interpreting for what the land trust is intending to do, it might be helpful, or maybe it isn't appropriate. I don't know. What do you think? Well, who well, was on the committee? Um, I guess that the select board would have to approve uh-huh. whoever it was. Sure. I don't know if that answers your question, though. Yeah, I think it's a question of would, would it be helpful to us and would it be allowed? That's a great question, John. And in the past, I usually send a text or an email to Jim and if there's some topics that's happening. He's not available to come on. He'll give me a update on something, then I would bring it to the meeting. Um, but you are right. Um, it'd be more efficient for sure. I, I yes. Yeah. It's a good point. Anything else for Jim? And then we can. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. For all your yeah. Thank you. We yeah. really appreciate all these updates. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we are, shall we move on to a lot that's got covered? Yeah, we really touched on quite yeah. a bit of the agenda. Um, but I will talk about them from a, a follow up on Dugway Road signage roping. You did mention some of that. So I did do a little survey there of, of the signs that were there that should be replaced. Uh, the signs would be signed to say no parking or no parking travel force on the road that we feel should be replaced with signs that say to allow access for emergency vehicles, no parking this side of road. Um, and I came up with six six signs and three posts, hmm. which I think would give us pretty good coverage. Um and I kind of wrote up something on those. Also, a uh, signs that would go on the existing ends Thanks, of the two mile stretch that would be perpendicular to the ones that are on there. So, very clear when you're seeing it. Um, it all hinges on the conversation regarding the four or five spots that are at the one mile point, which is that culvert point. Um, and my thoughts on that were couple things you know when when we went through this we did a survey with the residents we had over 16 17 residents come to meetings and that area was a lightning rod for for residents concerns of parking um you know and, uh, our goals were get emergency vehicles through there we wanted the uh, ordinance that's easy to understand by the public we want the ordinance that's easy to enforce by the police and we were trying not to stick signs every 20 feet um so I don't know. I think my gut feeling tells me that we should pursue adding the new signs on this year. Um, we can't do anything about rewriting the ordinance before the end of the swimming season anyways. So um, just because of the time it takes to get an ordinance approved and all that kind of stuff. So my gut feeling says let's focus on the no parking this side of the road signage, um, the signage on the end. And then uh, this winter, we want to take up concept of letting people park by there, and and we can do that. We did travel that route with with Pete and with Andy, with the acting chief, each one of us taking turns going through there, and we all kind of thought for simplicity and to meet the neighbors' concerns that those four or five spots would be sacrificed um, just for the continuity of the of the two mile range. Um, Again, we can we can pick that up later. We can change it for the remainder of this year. Um, so my gut tells me focus on the tokens on the new signage and and pick it up later. So as far as the parking advisory committee, I feel like we're at a point where we should like. I don't think it's a motion, but but how does everyone feel? Like like are we in agreement with Chuck? Should we are we you know shall we wait? Or do we feel like it needs more action sooner? Is this a, is a, is this an appropriate time to say how's everybody feel about that? I think so. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think I think I mean I, I've driven it as well, and and double check um, Chuck's suggestion. I think it's it's a great suggestion. So Chuck's to be clear, so Chuck's suggestion is that let me just re say it again, to, just to keep things as we are. Um, propose some new signage for more clarification. And are you saying go uh, the whole season or are we want to re revisit it in October or February? How do we want to? Or do what we want what to year are you talking about? This year, either, either October. Oh. Yeah, October. Do we want to revisit in October? How does everyone feel about it? Or do we want to? Uh, so uh, so, so the, the, the discussion is are those four spots in, in order to make those four spots legal parking, we'd have to do an ordinance change. So the question is, Chuck feels that it's too early to tell, you know, due to all the work we did before, let's just keep it, he feels that let's just keep it the way it is and move forward and see what move next. Move forward with the signs. Move forward with the signs. Absolutely. Let's, 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 let's document and clarify what we've already done so it's easier for the public to understand. If we're going to open the conversation up to allow parking in there, we need to reinvite those members of the public. Yep. We, we we can't just decide that on our own in good conscience. So we could need... you just turn your sign suggestion into something more resembling emotion for me then? 
All right, so good thought. So I would make a motion that we improve the signage on the side of the road, indicating no parking this side of the road for emergency vehicle access and not change the ordinance uh, and focus on the signage this year. And your, your specific suggestion is um, there would be a total of six signs that we add six signs. They would eight, all, eight signs total. Six signs. Eight people. signs total. Six of them would say no parking this side. Yep, six and one and one. Okay. And do they face? There was a discussion about the direction they faced last meeting. Yeah. So on the end, we're now going to put perpendicular signs yeah. on the same post, so that you don't have to drive by and do one of these. It's staring you in the face, facing you as you're driving. Facing the, the traffic. Yeah, on each end. And it'd be the exact same sign, but we would take the arrow off because the arrow just confuses things. All move. Yeah, we make that recommendation. Okay, so what do I do? Yeah. I want to agree with that. <laughs> yeah, you have to. Somebody has to second. Oh, uh, oh I, I second that motion. <laughs> Let me say all in favor. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Nicely done. Look how professional we're getting. It's just like a board. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have all these words down. I, I think it's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for all like of that. Thank that. you. In a nod. Yes. In, yes. And size. Becomes part and chairing the zoning board all those years ago. <laughs> I think coming back to the right. right. Anything else? Shall we move on to the Gillette Pond Dam, which we've already done, which but I just want to mark it that we've talked about it. Anything else on that one after talking with Jim? Gillette Pond. I, I'm moving on. Is that okay, everyone? Yeah, yes, okay. So. Uh, Gillette Pond uh, Dam replacement update. We just had it out of that. Yeah. Yeah, from Jim. Jim covered that. I, I, so what's after that? So do we put a... That is going to be East so we, update. Do we table that? Do we table discussion on Gillette Pond waiting for their... I mean, if, if they're not going to do anything until the spring, then... Uh, how much was the gravel uh, or fill a consideration? I mean, wasn't the next step one of the next steps to ask Pete, what would it take to widen the road? And maybe a, a financial value, a dollar value. I think we I think we could approach him with that and have that for the next meeting. I think that's reasonable. Okay. Does someone that, want that to- That makes sense to you, John? Um, I, I will talk to Pete before the next meeting, once we decide what the next meeting is. So I'm, I'm eyeballing a little, little sidebar here. Mm -hmm. Our next meeting is scheduled for the 25th of this month. I think I'm hearing that we could skip that one and go right to the 9th of October for our next meeting. Not... That's 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 on the that's on the town calendar. Thank okay. you for that. And I think we're gonna get to October. Um, I. Believe that we are not available on the ninth, John. And do we still think Monday's the best day? Never having met on a Thursday before. Right. right. So we do have the ability. We're only going to do it once a month. We do have the ability with Duncan to say when can we all meet. So why don't we? I think we can do that via email. I don't think that has yes. to be open meeting. Right. So why don't we take a look at our calendars and look at something the first week of October ish. Uh, we are not available till after the 10th. Or before? <laughs> uh, no. After. After? after? Yeah. So okay. yeah, by evening. Yeah. Okay. And uh, a delay in a week would be much more helpful for Yes. Um, so the John Rankin for the Gillette Pond um gravel pete gravel. is there a recommendation as to how much time i give pete to finish up Great his question. blood yeah. work before oh i coach him no, i think yeah. i i think he he would probably be able to chat with you now i mean as far as you wait any longer yeah i think he's got up yeah okay 
I and Josh kind of gave me the feeling he's busy, but he's normal busy. I think I might have missed something, but the additional gravel and stuff, we don't have to wait for the dam to make that happen, right? No, I was trying to be cheap, and I was going to try to have the get some of the fill from the dam. Oh, I get you. So they have to put it sense. into the dump truck to build the bank. Oh, that makes so sense. we were saying, can you just drop it over there? That makes so much sense. Yes, that was thrifty. The thrifty, that's what that it was. was. <laughs> might get some good rocks out of there too. I four of us are going to get that. Yeah. All right, and I might follow up with one of you uh, just to, unless Pete already knows, is to the starting and stopping place for uh, where that wider shoulder would go. Okay. Um, we did talk about. Uh, emailing, I'm just going to put it on here, emailing future meetings. And how about if I take that and I will email all of you and um, of what's on the calendar and I will copy Duncan when we decide what we're going to do. And he has a way, he said he just hides them, the meetings that are already scheduled. So I will email all of you. We're hiding the twenty fifth. So yeah, he uh uh the twenty fifth uh the twenty fifth we are not here September twenty fifth. Yeah, then that's but that doesn't mean you three can't. You'll have a quorum. Right. Let's, let's see how the email goes. Whether we try to get together in in a month, if we find that we really don't have common time for everybody, then we'll just do a do a three person mini meeting. Yeah, that's an interesting thing is we go to less frequent stuff. I mean, we can still communicate and figure out if there's enough of an agenda to get together for it. So not only meet when it's convenient, but decide whether it's worth meeting. Yes, good point. Because I think we're going to be, we'll have to be somewhat reactive, you know, like certainly things will pick up yeah. around Gillette Pond. We may need to decide that we'll go back to every, every two weeks at some for some yeah. period. And we'll want to get on the agenda for the select board. Mm -hmm. So it takes us a couple of meetings. Right. And I, I get back on the 18th. So I should have time to talk to Pete that week. Okay. Okay. It'll be a little tight. All right. So we have um, 725 East Cochrane Road. You want to take a moment? Um, it's because we are note takers. <laughs> um, Well, what else? Keep reading exercise. <laughs> Go look at uh, whatever it was out here that someone thought was interesting. The, have you read the stuff about the the Dugway uh, generator stuff? That was pretty interesting. So that was the uh, at you know, when you go to the gorge, there's a big kind of a brick re relic there. That was the first electrical generator. Wow. Because I, yeah, I knew there was a dam and, and all that for the, for the whole yeah. underwater factory. Matt's yard is fascinating. I think three of the mills mm -hmm. foundations are on Matt's property. Wow. So you look there, and there's just a group of stones there, and he'll tell you that, mm -hmm. that his house is. His house and Larry Mitchell old house were the, the original mill oh. offices. Wow. Was, I never knew that. I never knew that old houses were that old. Have you ever seen yeah. the, the mill foundation <clears throat> on the other side of the gorge? That, you know, so if you you know where the horses are, the little Yeah, no, I haven't. So if you go across that river that side. Oh on the other side. It is amazing. It the is. millstone is still there. Amazing. Because that's it the one is. that uh, it's amazing. It's mid nineteenth century at, mm -hmm. at that even older it's it's a real ruin but it's really worth a walk because bob Lowe was one who told us that 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 the whole purpose of the dam mm -hmm. up there on gillette's pond was to serve as a battery to feed the mills when the water levels were low Gosh. They, 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 that was all built like that so when water levels low they let a little bit out here and they'd be able to keep yeah. milling and stuff What's that come in? right down across the horse farm right mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or I actually have a voice in there, but 
Yeah, it's amazing how much that goes down on all these road, not all these rivers. You know, the Honey Hollow. Did you right there. hear all your email address? So all I've got is. Uh, yeah, there's still a little rain. Damn, damn, Buckley. Okay. Oh, okay. At VT, and I got that much. No, M no. Buckley mm -hmm. VT mm -hmm. A T T Y. Uh, I think I just lost it. And oh. You go no, this one. Wait, just wait. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah, it's okay. M Buckley mm -hmm. V T. Uh, oh, Microsoft uh, Office. A T T Y. A Bruce and Light. That's an extra. Look at T. Oh, okay. All right. Of course. Sixty-nine hours of the year when I was working. And now looking at it, going, uh, yeah, looking at the first half. That's real money. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to figure out a way, a way around that. Yeah. Can I can I survive on on pages? Okay. You know? All right, we're on to um, uh, East Cochrane Road update. A whole lot. So we're going to eventually we we're going to talk to Pete and ask him for uh, estimate of cost if it was something the town wanted to do. Am I yeah recalling that discussion accurately? If you wanted to talk to him about that also, I, okay, you, you're going to be the Phil guy. You, 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 <laughs> we're going to call you. Phil. We'll start calling you Phil. <laughs> Got two Johns. We'll call you Phil. Okay. Uh, anything else? Just keep, uh, um, anything else you guys saw on East Park okay. and Road this year? Different light usage. So the, the there is that issue across from the Edmonds parking, you know, the West White Hill bottom, right across from the next to Jane Miller South there. That parking across from there. Um, it's it always you know people park there, right. and it's just so hard for people to understand when they look at that sign that says "and no parking zone" and they go, "Okay, I'll park here." So, which I, I I get, but I don't get. So I get yeah, and I don't get. Yeah. So that um, uh, it's not an issue. It will be an issue when it's an issue. I'm, I'm surprised on on Dugway Road anyway. How many? Neighbors, people who live there have put up ropes and stumps and all that stuff, and have just said basically, "We're sick of this." Over here, they've they've actually not just complaining; they're physically getting out there and putting up stakes and ropes and all that kind of stuff. It's a matter of time before somebody does that. He's so talking about as well. Richmond Land Trust land, so, right? Oh, there you yeah. go. Yeah, so they would have to do it. Put anything there. Yeah. The other parts are are roped, so it might be twenty. 20, bless you, John. <laughs> Did I chase it out of you? <laughs> 2024. Um, there's been people parking. They park uh, where the Richmond Land Trust has that bump out area. Um, it's just besides this weekend, I think that's the only the river's been really muddy, not a lot of activity on it. Okay. Uh, Edmonds Bridge at Bon West White Hill uh, is. It's pretty fluid. It seems like a lot. What's nice is it doesn't seem like people park there for a long bit of time. Like they go in for a run and they're gone, or they walk their dogs and they're gone. It seems like there's yeah. such a fluid movement. And he did a great job. Those lines, that. those lines make they're great. You don't get people taking up all spots. Yeah, that works great. Yeah, and then the you know we'll get new neighbors over at the across from us, and maybe we can talk about that. Okay. Any other updates from anybody else on East Carpen? I saw two uh, illegally parked cars there yesterday, but they weren't causing any particular problem. But, mm -hmm. um, it's been pretty quiet. Mm -hmm. I did uh, one interesting thing uh, that I did get a call out of the blue from somebody in the Northeast Kingdom oh, yeah. about what the situation was, yeah. and I thought, well, that's interesting. And they had they, they weren't irate or anything. They were just they had gone to the town website and realized there wasn't parking there and found our my name on the the roster there and called up and I told them what was up and they said great come okay. down it was kind of interesting. interesting but again maybe evidence of systems working a little bit yeah you know? yeah although you didn't really love your number being out there you know? yeah I thought that was a little strange but I didn't mind. Okay. yeah my cell number and I was like <laughs> but I'm glad I was glad to be able to have that conversation <laughs> Okay, we have thank you, John. Uh discussion of uh, closing date for Johnny Brook parking. Well, there was I put that in there it was when we met with VTrans this spring. They were 
adamant they wanted to make sure that that we had closed that officially closed that before they, they started plowing and all that stuff i believe and we should look into this i guess that the trails yeah mike that mountain biking trail and all that i believe that closes november 15th oh. so it would seem like maybe we should try to maybe find out when that trail closes and, and have our closing of the parking area coincide with that now maybe some pete has on his calendar already too can i ask pete <laughs> Tell me, uh, the question is, does he have a closing date? Would he be removing the ropes? So the question is, ask Pete, does, do you currently have a date in mind to remove the ropes that Johnny broke? Thank and, you. I, and I seem to think that date was November 15, but we can put it out there. And or snowstorm, probably. Yeah. Three of the different times of the year, so. All right. Any other questions about Johnny Brook before we move off? All right. And then approval for minutes for last meeting minutes. It's on the 14th. I am um, happy to how do you say that? Can I approve it? Make a motion. Make a motion to approve the Thank you. August uh, 14th, 2023, meeting minutes. Aye. 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 Great. Who's the day of last meeting again? 14th of August. Okay. And um, suggestions for next agenda, the next meeting. Agenda items. Uh, anything else that has fallen off this list? Anybody else we want to have in here? Anybody? Any discussions? So we committed to, to circulate by email some suggestions. Yeah. Uh, okay. Typically, I, I'll, come up, with a, I'll like come up with a baseline. Okay. Yeah, I, I suggest we do it that way. And and we need we certainly have a date. So once we have a date, but you know okay. that way we get all of the Duncan and Duncan can do his yeah. thing. Um, I will officially say that John and I uh, approve whatever you come up with. <laughs> What's that? We approve whatever. You don't have to wait for our response okay. um, in case we're not here. Thank you. Um, the last thing that makes me before, I always have an agenda item if anything else, and I'm going to say anything else. I did circulate uh, Andy's uh, thoughts on the Doug way, and I think you've covered all of them. Do you all got copies of it email? Um you don't want to lose his his uh thoughtfulness and his perspective as we move forward. So um does anyone have any comments about that email or I was just gonna say yeah again thanks we talked about it and um we have additional signage going up. Yeah. So I I I, yeah, I think I think <laughs> we do all respect what what Andy does. Yeah, it was consistent with my yes conversation with him. Yeah, yeah. so I think we yes. say that you're totally right about the sign. We're on board with that. We're doing yeah. something about it. Um, we we need to have a conversation with the neighbors before we do the deal with those four spots or whatever. Does somebody want to craft a response to him? Yep, happy. Well, I got me down. <laughs> I will do that one. Thank you. He's out of town. But I will take care of the Andy email and I will do the PAC meeting email and include Duncan in our decision. And that's all that I will do. I was thinking on the agenda, one of the last things we should put in there is is review of action items. You know, it's mm -hmm. a, like what you just did. You said, I'll take care of that. And John said, I'm going to take care of Phil. Or Phil said that. I'll take care of John. Or yeah. and I'll take care of the, the signage with Pete, you know, and just so we know walking out the door what our assignments are I, I'll, I'll make that tweak i think all right how are we good for adjourning now i move that we adjourn yeah, i'll second that bye bye great thank you lisa oh thank you so much lisa